Okay. The title of the message tonight is The Title Deed of God's Promises. Of the promises that God made you or is making you, the, you need to know that you have a title deed for it, and we're going to show you how that applies. And uh, it reminds me of uh, a family that we know that uh, years ago, uh, a woman and her took her two children to uh, another nation and uh, an island and on the island she found some property she wanted to buy and it was a swamp and uh, nobody could build there and so she got it very cheap and what she did she gave uh, uh, got, got a boat and some buckets and hired some young men uh, and her son to go out uh, out a little ways from the island and to to go down and dive down into the water to the sand and get fill those buckets with sand and they'd come back up and put the sand <clears throat> in the boat and then they'd take the boat back to the island and and uh, uh, fill in the the uh, swamp and then after a while she bought it cheap because nobody could build on it but after she built it up with sand uh, from the bottom of the sea uh, which was a real uh, deep at that particular place, uh, then it turned out to be a very beautiful building site uh, on the uh, end of the Nile. And uh, uh, so it was very uh, desirable for people. And uh, she built several buildings and built a compound on that land. And uh, other people got jealous uh, because it was such a good uh, property and so they would go to the government uh, offices and look at the records of who owned it, find out that this woman owned it, and they would tear out the page, and then they would want to go there and say it was their land. They, they owned it, and she had the title deed to it. Hallelujah! <clears throat> and, and this happened repeatedly because she owned such a valuable piece of real estate. She was able to build several buildings on it, and and that was, uh, they've lasted now for many years, and we, we go down there often. And uh, uh, so it was, a, it was the title deed that was really important for her to keep it. Otherwise, the enemy would have stolen it from her. Mm -hmm. She had the title deed. Well, there is that concept of title deed that you have a title deed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. And your faith is the title deed to the promises that God makes you. Hallelujah. It's really important that we understand that we have a title deed to the promises that God has given to us. And so we're going to look at this and see how to apply it. And this goes back to the definition of faith in the Bible, which is Hebrews 11, verse 1. And of course, this is a verse you're all familiar with. I know... I know you're very familiar with it. Faith is the substance, substance. of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. So it's evidence of the unseen world. And uh, we need it. Deed. And it's the evidence, it's the proof that there is something in the unseen world that belongs to you. That's, Ooh, what, that's what faith is. It's building a trust in God and a uh, Trust in God's promises. But there's also this uh, translation, uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Amplified Classic Version, and it uses the term uh, title deed. Now, mm -hmm. when we think about it, how did we go from uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 in, a, in a version that we're all familiar with, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, to uh, something a much richer definition of faith, uh, because the he, because the Greek uh, language is very rich, and so when uh, people translate it, they try to find a word here in Greek, and then they find a word here in in uh, for our case English that would correspond to that. Mm -hmm. But that Greek word has many many different meaning it's a rich word 
And so it's mm -hmm. not easily translated by one word. And so the Amplified tries to give us an expanded version of what this uh, verse is really saying. And I want us to just go over this slowly in the Amplified uh, classic uh, version. And this is Hebrews 11. Oh, this, this is very, very good. <clears throat> uh, please listen carefully. Now, faith is the assurance the confirmation, the title deed of the things that we hope for, being the, the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Oh, that is so, oh, that is wonderful. That is so rich. I, oh, I wow. Just to go slowly over it again. Oh, wow. And we get an wow. idea of what the he, what the Greek language really meant, what was being said here mm -hmm. by the writer of the Hebrew book. And uh, it, it says that it's a title deed. It's also a proof of something. Yes. It, it's a fact. But, but it's not a fact that mm -hmm. is understood by our senses, by what we see, yeah, what, what we, we hear. hear. But nonetheless, it's a fact that it's real, that what is in the unseen world is more real <laughs> than in oh, the things we see. Wow. Because Hallelujah. what we see was created by an invisible God. Hallelujah. As he spoke creation into existence. Mm, mm, I want you to read this verse again. Oh, now faith is the assurance, <clears throat> the confirmation, the title deed of the things that we hoped for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real faith fact what is not revealed to the senses. Okay. Faith says things are real, even though we don't see them yet. Even though they're in the unseen realm, they're still real. And we have proof of it. And our proof that the things that we cannot see are real and the things that we're hoping for are real. And the proof of it is our faith. And so how does faith come? Faith comes, comes by the Lord speaking, speaking to, to us. us. By hearing faith the comes, voice. <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of the Lord. And then we have uh, something we hope for. But first, see, it comes from we hear the word. We hear a promise. Mm, mm, and mm. now we're, we can hope for it. So oh, you don't really have, you don't have hope uh, until you hear the voice. And when the voice uh, tells you, this is the promise that is for you. This is your promise. Well, you know, and that's what <clears throat> happened. That's exactly what happened at 3 a.m. that morning that the Holy Spirit, the voice of God spoke to me. Psalms 118 verse 17. You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And when I heard that voice and, and I put my faith out there and said, this is the voice of the Lord. And this is what he's saying to me. This is my promise. And I have a title deed to it. It gave me hope. Okay. It gives you hope. It when gives you, me hope. When you hear the voice and when the Lord speaks to you, uh, and we'll talk about how this, this can come uh, more in more detail in a moment. But, but when you know that you've heard from the Lord and you have a promise and you know that he has promised you this thing, then that becomes your title deed to it. It becomes your proof that it belongs to you. Just like the woman I was talking about, they tried to steal her land by taking the records out of the government files, they would just tear them up, throw them away, and then they would claim the land as being theirs. But she had the title deed. The enemy cannot steal from you what you have as a title deed to the things that cannot be seen yet, but the things you're hoping for. And now you've got the promise and the surety that they are yours. Okay, so 
What is the title deed? Well, it's proof that some property belongs to you. And let's say that uh, you have a distant relative who uh, gives you as an inheritance uh, a piece of property in another state. And so the lawyer sends you the title deed. It's all signed, sealed, and delivered. It's yours. You don't have to go look at the land. It's yours. You don't, you can do whatever you want to. You can sell the land or the property without ever having seen it uh, because you have the title deed. The title deed is the proof that it belongs to you. And so that's what a title deed is. And so in the, in the spiritual realm, mm. the title deed, and that's what Hebrews 11 one is talking about here, is if we believe, then that belief is, operates just like a title deed. It's the proof that that promise belongs to us. I love this concept. It, it puts things very black and white. There's an enemy cannot steal it from you now. See, Normally we think about, well, I found something in the Bible. I need a healing or I need prosperity or I need my relationships uh, healed or, or whatever. I need a better job or a better home or a better car, whatever we need. Uh, we're just pleading for them, asking mm -hmm. God to give them to us. But we don't know whether we're going to get them or not. But in this case, when you realize that your faith operates just like a title deed. It guarantees mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you're going to get the promise, the promise that God has made you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that, that's just the introduction to <laughs> faith as a title deed. Now, I want to uh, have, uh, I want to apply this concept then. How can we apply this concept? that our faith acts like a title deed and proves proves that we're going to have that promise fulfilled, even before we've seen it. We haven't seen it with our senses yet, but we know that we have that promise. We have the assurance in our heart uh, we have that promise. Well, I'm going to bring applying a faith as a title deed to the God's promise. I'm going to break it down into four things that we need to think about. Now, this is not a formula. Uh, I, I don't believe in formulas, but it's, it gives you some concepts and helps you. You don't want to miss any of these things either. <clears throat> and so, first of all, the first way of applying it is discover the promise that applies mm -hmm. to your situation. What problem are you facing? Is it sickness in your body? Is it poverty? Is it a lack of uh, finances? Is it uh, chaos in your home? Whatever it is, whatever the problem is, you need a promise because <clears throat> God's solution to your problems are always promises. Now see, in the Old Testament, uh, Israel went into the promised land. But in the New Testament, we are in the land of promises. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. all, there are thousands of promises. Mm -hmm. God has made us, uh, I've heard numbers like 7,000 uh, promises that he has made us. And they're in Christ Jesus. They're all yes and, amen. and no. And then we say amen. amen. So in Christ Jesus, here's 7,000 uh, promises that are available to you. And Jesus always says, yes. And then we come back and we say, amen. That mm -hmm. means it's for me. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> okay. So we have to discover the promises. How can we discover a promise? So let's say we're facing a problem over here. And, and the problem might be sickness, let's say. Okay, and so how do we find, how do we discover the promise? Well, you need to be reading the scriptures. And if you have a specific problem you're interested in that you're dealing with, well, 
and let's say it was related to sickness, we'll start reading the verses about healing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't go over there and start reading about prosperity and think that those verses are going to speak to you. You need to have a problem in mind, be reading in the area that deals with that, and perhaps uh, some of those the Holy Spirit will make alive to you. Mm -hmm. That's one way that the verse just becomes alive to you. Or you may hear a voice. Yeah. Uh, Sherry heard a voice. Were you asleep when you heard it? Yes, I was asleep. <clears throat> okay, so in her sleep, she heard a scripture given to her. That was the Holy Spirit giving her that scripture so that she would live and not die, but uh, proclaim the works of the Lord. And, well, and after I heard the voice, I was awake. Okay, and I then that, awake. that uh, woke her up. Yes. So uh, there's many different ways. Uh, and so you may just have an unction in your spirit uh, that says, this is my promise. This is the promise that belongs to me. So we're although we're talking about hope, we're making it very specific. We need a specific promise. Otherwise, we're just going to be pleading with God to do something. But this is a much more proactive approach of applying your faith to bring forth the fulfillment of the promise. Mm, so cool. you start with a problem and, and you begin to search out the scriptures and you, and you begin to listen to teachings in, in the area you have a problem. And, and let the Holy Spirit bring uh, something uh, to your thinking. And, and so that's a way that you can discover uh, the promise. And so it's really important. And Sherry's already given you one of my examples. I had two examples I was going to say. And one was uh, Sherry's uh, promise about healing. And she did get healed. And yeah. the Lord healed her as a result of that. That was a promise to her. That was like a title deed to it. Uh, that it was going to be fulfilled and we had to fight for it. It didn't and happen we, overnight. We, we certainly <clears throat> had to fight for it because the the test kept showing that the cancer was there. And three surgeons were in agreement about the medullary carcinoma. It had a name and it was the second highest malignant thyroid cancer. And so they continued to come back to me over and over again well, this test, you know, just uh, confirmed it, and this test confirmed it. They tried to get that title deed from me, just like the woman who had the land, and the people would go to the government and try to get her uh, her land. And, and my promise kept being uh, out there. Uh, the enemy tried to take it over and over again, but he was not able to do it. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so the first step then is to discover what God is promising you about a specific problem. You you need the specific uh, answer, the specific promise that he makes you because his solution is always a promise. Now I want to tell you about another example uh, that was very real to us and uh, Sherry, I'm going to ask if you'd go get the, the scripture off of the refrigerator, which I had intended to have it here. Uh, this has been on our refrigerator for seven years. Uh, that's when the Lord gave it to me. I, I typed it out in uh, bold letters. And uh, since then, for the last seven years, uh, it has been on the face of our refrigerator. Every time I've gone by there, I've seen it. And, and so basically... <laughs> This is my title deed for something else. I'll mm -hmm. tell you this story. Uh, and basically, it's just the scripture. I've typed out the scriptures in bold letters, big letters, and put them on the refrigerator. So every time I went in there, okay. So this was about seven years ago. And I was praying and seeking the Lord about uh, our oldest son who had been on drugs for 25 uh, years, several years. And uh, we wanted him to be delivered. And there was uh, some verses that were uh, that were uh, quickened to my spirit, and I knew that this is what the Lord had promised me. It was a promise that my son would be delivered. And I want you to read this. I believe I have it there in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. and no, Isaiah, Isaiah. Uh, 49, verses 24 and 25. These are the promises that he gave me. These, this is another example. I want to show you uh, what it 
how to use, or because we're talking about how to applying, the, how, to, how, how to apply this concept we're talking about today. This is how I discovered it. This is how, I, and then we're going to talk about how I used it. Okay. Isaiah 49, 24 through 25. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Are the captives of the righteous be delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you and I will save your children. Okay. So what he said to me was, though your son be a legal captive, I will deliver him. Well, I spoke to him one day. I spoke when when I had these verses. I spoke to him, and uh, he hadn't been arrested, but there's a warrant for his arrest. And in a couple of hours, he was arrested, and he went well, he went to jail. But basically, this is the concept here. This is a promise. Though your son is a legal captive, I will deliver him. And it's right there in Isaiah. Uh, 49 verses 24 and 25 and I hold this up to you today to say that this has been my mm -hmm. title, title deed. deed to that promise that's the way I've expressed it I typed it out I put it here on this piece of paper and I cut it out and I put it on our refrigerator I've been looking at it for seven years but that was the day the Lord delivered him I met with him I went over these verses with him uh, he was uh, he got arrested and this was the day he was mm -hmm. arrested and uh, they charged him uh, and the charges that were against him. He was going to go to prison for eight years and he was guilty of all of it. He was guilty uh, and uh, of everything they said he was guilty of. He was yeah, guilty. Yeah. He was doing everything uh, uh, illegal uh, and uh, it amounted to eight years. But remember, I had a promise and the promise was though your child, though your son, be a legal captive, mm -hmm. I will deliver him. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, this is uh, like seven years later. And if, it, I, if I hadn't gotten that promise, he would still be in prison today because mm -hmm. he had eight years and he was guilty. I, he knew he was guilty. We all wow. knew he was guilty. He was doing exactly what they accused him of doing uh, when they finally caught him. Uh, they'd been looking for him for a while. And so, but I had a promise from the Lord uh, that was just quickened to my spirit as I was studying about his uh, situation and about uh, deliverance from drugs. And the Lord said, though he be a legal captive, I will deliver him. That's exactly what happened. He didn't spend a day in prison. He mm -hmm. was in jail for a few days until they decided what to do with him. And then they released him on uh, probation. probation. And so he was on probation for five years, but he never went to any kind of a, a meeting or other than to go to a, a probation officer, but he never had to do anything else. And so he never spent a day in prison, which is exactly what the Lord uh, promised me. Uh, but, but you get a promise and that's just part of the issue, part of the process. That's not, it's not over with then. And, and see, I know a lot of people that get a promise from God and, and then nothing happens and they get mad at God. They turn their back on God. Mm -hmm. They think God has abandoned them, but that's not it at all. The pro There's a process uh, involved. And I, I want to break it down to four things. We have to discover the promise mm -hmm. that God is making us. We can't we can't manufacture one. We have to just spend time with the Lord until we find the promise. Second, we have to have confidence mm -hmm. in that promise. Third, we have to apply uh, that promise, apply our faith uh, to that promise. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. And then we also have to have because faith. faith without works is dead. Right. And, and then we, and the fourth point I want to make is we need patience and endurance. So now I've talked about discovering it. I've given you some examples, but basically it's spending time with the Lord, spending time with the Lord, hearing him uh, and, and finding the promise and then mark it down uh, just like I did. You can put it on your refrigerator 
and it's like going to the bank. If you have the title deed for it, it's the guarantee, the proof that it is fulfilled. But there are still other things that are involved in the process and you have to have confidence. Well, uh, I want you to know from Philippians that you cannot have confidence in your flesh. Whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> your confidence has to be in Ooh, the Lord, Lord. and mm. in, in what he's doing and in his promises. So first of all, let's look, read this from Philippians. We cannot have confidence in our flesh. Oh, wow. Philippians 3, verses 3 through 5. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay, now Paul's writing this, and he was a Jew. And if anybody could have confidence in the flesh, he could have mm. because he was a Benjaminite of the Benjaminites, a Pharisee of yeah, the Pharisees. Pharisees. He had studied all the law. He he knew all about the law. And so if anybody could have confidence in the flesh, it could have been Paul. But let's see what he writes. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so, or I could have. I circumcised the eighth day, the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. And so he says, if anybody could have confidence in the flesh, it's me. <laughs> but... I do not. <laughs> he did done everything right. But yes. still, he, he, it wasn't by flesh. On, Woo, on flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you, have, did you know that having confidence is a commandment? We are commanded, commanded to have confidence. But our confidence is not what we can do, not in our flesh, mm -hmm. but what the Lord is doing. So read this, Jerry. Okay, in Joshua okay. 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Question mark. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay, so it's a commandment. Haven't I commanded you? <laughs> wow. Have confidence. Have confidence. I've got you. This is a commandment. So there's four points I want to make. Yeah, we've already, we've discovered it now. That was number one. Now we've got to have confidence that hmm. the Lord is bringing it to pass. Or read this in Hebrews here. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Okay, you're commanded to have confidence. Mm -hmm. Don't don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. And by throwing it away is is part of your mouth. Don't speak it out. Don't speak that it's gone. That, that mm -hmm. you don't have it. That you don't have it. Okay. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Hallelujah. 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 That's good. Okay. So there, there is the, my second point. The third point is we have to apply uh, the faith we have to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Sherry said, you have to have some works that go along with it. If you believe now, what might those works be? Well, I, I've just listed a few of them, but it might be the way you pray. Mm -hmm. You pray into the promise, mm -hmm. or it might be you begin confessing the promise, or you may have a prophetic act, a prophetic call to action. For example, mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. Uh, you know, Naaman, who mm. was a leper, he went to uh, Elisha uh, to have, be healed, and he gave him a prophetic call to action. He sent his servant out there and said, go to the Jordan mm, and, and dip, dip yourself, yourself seven, seven times. times. That's a prophetic call to action. The prophet has said, this is what you need to do, okay? So that's a way to apply faith. Uh, that you're, if you're around prophets and the prophets uh, give you a word to do what they say. But they're also, uh, we can pray into this or we mm -hmm, can, with mm -hmm. confession and what we believe in our hearts. So I want you to read these uh, first one on prayer. Okay. First John five fourteen. 
Now, this is the confidence. Still going back to confidence, mm -hmm. but this is really about prayer now. But having confidence when we pray to the Lord because we have heard the promise. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the confidence because if you haven't heard the voice, if you haven't heard what he's promising you, if you haven't worked that out first, this is not going to work. But when you've heard what the promise is, then you pray in accordance with it, keeping your confidence. You're no longer pleading for God to do something and you don't know exactly what, because now you have the promise and you, and you pray into the promise and that's where you have the confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now good. this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So it's about asking, it's praying, okay? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Okay, so this Hallelujah. is about praying into the promise. Mm, mm, so we good. have confidence, we've heard, we know what the promise is, and let's reinforce that in our prayer. Don't just plead for God to do something. Be specific uh, about what is involved here. And then the next one, we make confessions, bold mm -hmm. confessions mm -hmm. of faith. Now, shall you read this verse? Romans 10, 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you see, many people use this Romans 10, 9 and 10, just for the salvation process. But it, salvation is if you've got a tumor, uh, you know, in your body and it needs to be removed. You need saving from that tumor uh, or perhaps uh, any type of mental uh, situation, depression, anxiety, uh, agony, worry. Uh, you need saving from those. And so okay. it says here that the heart believes and then the mouth speaks it out. And that is salvation. Salvation comes. Okay. Our, our deliverance, our healing, our yes. prosperity, or whatever it is, it comes then when we first believe in our heart. That's where the title deed is, believing in our heart. And then we begin to confess while we're speaking, begins to line up with what we believe in our heart, what the title deed that God has promised us. Okay. Amen. I have another Amen. one. Confession here. It says, we're not gonna. We're not gonna waver. We're not gonna stumble and 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 be wishy washy. It says in Hebrews ten twenty nine, we're going to hold fast to our confession of our hope without wavering. Remember, Abraham did not waver. He did not stagger at the promise that God made made him. He didn't believe one day and then the next day. He was speaking garbage out of his mouth and and tearing up that title deed. And that's what it does. It tears it up. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, another thing I've seen people do, and that is when they're around Christians, uh, they, they, make, faith, they yeah. make confessions of faith. And then when they're around the unbelievers, they're maybe they go to their doctor and tell them how sick they are. But when they're around, uh, uh, Christians and believers, they say, oh, I'm healed, I'm healed. And then they go to the doctor and say, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Oh, oh that's not, <laughs> that's wavering. That's yeah. going back and forth. You've got to get your con confession, uh, be firm in, in your confession. Okay, so uh, I'm talking about uh, four different points. First one, we have to discover it. And then we have to have confidence of, about mm -hmm. uh, that promise. And then we have to apply it and I've given you just a few examples there are a lot more examples and you be specific and and do what God tells you to do so I'm just giving you some examples and the and then my fourth point we need endurance and patience and uh, I believe there's a, a little bit of difference between these two things and let me just say that uh, patience the trying of your faith works patience uh, patience. Uh, so you're in a trial, but you're applying your faith and you, you, you're able to overcome it uh, because of patience. 
uh, patience. Now, another thing about patience is it uh, it waits on God's timing. It flows in God's timing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. some people can get out ahead of God or they mm -hmm. get behind God or they go away from God. And, and that's not in God's timing. We need to be patience keeps us in mm -hmm. God's timing. Endurance uh, is we endure. We have some hardships, but endurance is that strength and power that you know, brings us over these uh, uh, hardships. But one of the things it does, it it works character in our lives. And, and so we need endurance while we're waiting on the manifestation of what we're believing. So there's two different things here. And both of these are crucial in bringing forth the fulfillment of the promise. Mm -hmm. So I want to have some verses I want to share you to read but endurance, and that's that power for that uh, the long term. You're in it regardless yeah, of what comes. Long term. Uh, and but patience is you're you're making sure that you're walking with the Lord and in His timing and keeping mm. your faith out there. Both of these things are important, and they're a little different. Jerry, I want you to read these verses. Uh, Romans five verses three and four. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. The glory in tribulation. Mm. Uh, this is going to be related to endurance. Oh, wow. If, if wow. you, uh, there are troubles. We're all, we all experience trouble. Uh, how, do you, how do you respond to trouble? If you glory in it mm. and, and you're keeping your faith out there, oh, hallelujah, then you, you're handling the tribulation different than a lot of people. Go, okay, go ahead. Read okay. This. But we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Or endurance. And perseverance, endurance, character. Oh, it's producing character. See what, mm. when, when something happens in your life, we're being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And so we have to work through that process and let what, there's a process going on. We're being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. We're developing character. Now, if you don't have endurance, if you're not persevering, then then you're not developing the character. Yeah. See, I know a lot of people that receive a promise of God and they think now they don't have to do anything. There's nothing else uh, required, nothing else involved. But yet God is working a process in all of us all of to us. conform us. It, it's not, he's not, uh, he's not punishing us. He's transforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. And if you, if you have perseverance and you're on top of perseverance, you know how to per persevere and endure, then you see that your character is coming out. Ooh, out of the fire. Hallelujah, out of the carry, fire. And it's going to be needed. Yeah. For let's end the end the scripture here. What's okay. the rest? What's the rest of that first scripture? And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Hope. We're back to hope. Back Faith to hope. is the substance of hope. See that well, we're hoping for what has been promised to us. We don't get what has been promised to us if we don't have the character to carry it. Oh, that's good. That's yes, good. Hallelujah. That's good. Uh, you know, this process strengthens uh, our faith. It makes us resilient and it makes us steadfast. And uh, Hebrews 10, 36 says, uh, for you have need of endurance. Oh, it's important. So, mm -hmm, so that after you have done the will of the Lord, you will receive the promise. Okay, well, that's what we're wanting. We're wanting the promise. How do we get the promise? Well, we've got to endure some things. We've got to endure some hardships until our character is refined so that we're conformed to the image of Jesus mm -hmm, Christ. Mm -hmm. Then we get what we're hoping for. We get the promises fulfilled. That's all about endurance. Mm -hmm. But I said there are two things that are real crucial. And one is endurance and the next one is patience. And they're they are different. So I want you to read this verse about patience. Mm -hmm. This is from James. Probably. James 1, 4. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking 
nothing. <laughs> you get the promise when you when you lack nothing. Mm. Okay, so it's faith works patience. Okay, so we we've got to when we face a problem, we keep our faith out there and the trying of our faith works patience. And so we have to count it all joy. We have to be joyful in a process of our faith mm -hmm. being tried. And then we will have the fulfillment of the promise and we will lack nothing. Nothing. Woo, glory. So glory. Those, those three again, faith, works, and patience. Um, Is that what you said? I, I don't know what I said. I said yeah. uh, the trying of faith mm -hmm. works patience. Yes. Trying of faith works patience. Right. And then we will lack nothing when we have patience. But patience comes out of our faith being tried. In other words, we faced a test or a trial. We have kept our faith out there. We've had the patience. And then we receive the promise and we lack nothing we have everything we have everything hallelujah we have the promise that's what i said okay it was good it was hallelujah. good 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 hallelujah. and so this message is is a message for all of us i don't know about you uh but there are issues that that come into to my life and i need a promise I need a promise from the Lord. And so I go to the word of God. I begin to pray and, and, uh, and fellowship with him so that he'll, he'll tell me, uh, this, this is your promise. This is the, the title deed. And, and then I have to persevere. I have to, uh, to endure. I have to, uh, be confident that God is a man that he cannot lie. And that he's not going to hurt me. He's not going to injure me. Uh, he's not going to lie to me. Uh, and, you know, but uh, other people can do that. Other people, you know, can lie to you. Other people can uh, disappoint you. Uh, other people can bring harm to you, but not God. And so I believe that, that as we... Uh, just receive our title deeds uh, to to the the promises. The promise, the title deed to the promised land, is all of those promises God says yes to, and then our response is Amen. We receive our healing, and there's some of you that need to receive your healing. You know it. You've you've got it up here in your in your thinking. You've read books and you've gone to classes and you've gone to training and you know how you're supposed to do everything, uh, but you haven't received it in your spirit, man. And when you receive it in your heart, then that's when it begins to manifest. That's when it manifests. And so, if I have a, a an issue then I want to go to the Lord and I want to hear what God has to say. I don't want to hear what Dr. So-and-so has to say. I don't want to hear what the radiologist has to say. I don't want to hear what my, my family has to say. I don't want to hear any other voice except the voice of the Lord. And once I hear the voice of the Lord and he gives me that scripture and I call it my my silver bullet. Once he gives me that bullet, then I can put it in my mouth and I can speak it out and he will bring it to pass.